here. Hello. I know TikTok. Yes. Hi. So for those of you that listen to the podcast, um, I am Roberta Blevins. Hello. And this right here next to me is the beautiful Michelle Carpenter. She was my last guest on the podcast and she was with Beachbody. And we talk about the nastiness that is Beachbody and we talk about anti-MLM, or I'm not, sorry. We talk about MLM coaches, <laughs> not anti-MLM coaches, um, oh, specifically Josh Coates. My, my wheels are turning. <laughs> right? All right. So um, if any of you, I, we are definitely going to be doing more podcasts on Monet. Absolutely, for sure. Absolutely. So um, for everybody that hasn't listened to the podcast yet or has never seen you and has no idea who you are, can you introduce yourself to us? Oh, my gosh. Yes, I can try. <laughs> so I'm Michelle. <laughs> I am... Sorry, I was just trying to get on the uh, live as a viewer on my desktop so that I can see the comments. So anyway, I did that. And now I'm here. (laughs) Okay. So um, my name's Michelle. I have been in um, three different MLMs um, over the course of like 16 years, but for pretty short time periods. But my primary one was Beachbody. That's the one we spoke about in our episode. Um, I have a two-year-old son and a wonderful husband. And um, yeah, they're they're the reason I got into Beachbody and the reason I got out of it. (laughs) Thank you for the gifts. Uh, The podcast is called Life After MLM. Um, Yeah. So again, like that number three, right? Like that seems to be the magic number of MLMs that people join. It just so many people go, yeah, I also joined three <laughs> and I myself also joined three. Um, That's Beach how long Body it was one that you were the most, right? And one of the things that we talked about it on your episode that like absolutely floored me was the ability to not only like have all of those ghost accounts, sorry, my hair is wet and it's like dripping down my neck. So I need to fix it, but not the only the ability to like have your husband underneath you, but the ability to have like a ghost account. And then also the ability, like once you unlock a certain rank, as you climb the pyramid, you have the ability Mm -hmm. to unlock what's called business centers. And in our discussion, we, we were unsure how many, and you're like, I think you can have at least three, but you have since learned the actual number. And I would love you to share that with everybody because it is shocking. Yeah. Um, so credit to Deanna Mims for this one, because I learned it from her YouTube she read all of the terms and conditions and I give her so much credit for that because She's it's amazing. something I will never do <laughs> <laughs> um, because I can't pay attention to one thing for that long. But um, yeah, apparently you can have up to, they cap it at 25 business centers. So theoretically, <laughs> since my upline was controlling her husband's account too, 50. Right. So you could theoretically hit the first rank where you get like the, you get your husband underneath you and you're building both of those up to whatever, what is it? First star or second star diamond where you can Two open star up business diamond. centers. Mm-hmm. And then you're just basically opening up a business center, business center till you then control 52 accounts in your own pyramid. Yeah. That's can you- pure insanity. And for anybody to be like, it's not a pyramid scheme when you can literally physically control 52 accounts that are underneath you. Yeah. So this like is that- what I want to know, like from Beachbody. This is what I want answers about. If it's about selling, why can't you just sell under one name? Like your customers can all purchase just from you if it's about selling. Right. If it's, if it's not about, about selling, recruiting, why do you need 52 accounts? Yeah. Yeah. I I really would like to hear their actual explanation. And one thing that Deanna said in her YouTube video about this was, you know, she was like, I wonder if anyone at the FTC has ever even dug into this. (laughs) Probably not. Probably not. Or ask that question. (laughs) Because like those sort of things to me is like proof right? Because you're not opening up a franchise. You're not opening up a brick and mortar. You're not, you don't have like any sort of storefront or anything. So why do you need 52 accounts? Right. So someone Unless is asking what is a business buy center? things and stack things to control your pyramid to get that big fat bonus check. 
Right. So I just want to explain real quick exactly what I mean by business center. So in Beachbody, when you hit um, a certain rank, um, you like unlock the ability to sign yourself up underneath you as a downline. Um, that entity, that second business center is also able to sell, recruit, and rank just the same as your first business. So you're literally your own downline and your own upline. And then when that second business center hits two star diamond, that same rank, they can enter or they can open a third business center and a fourth and so on. And a, theoretically all 50 of those accounts could go 15 star diamond, which is the, the highest level in beach body. And, um, 15 yeah. <laughs> star. That's the highest 15 level. Star. Yeah. That's a, that's a superstar diamond. Those are the, the two words for, for that rank. <laughs> Hi, Danielle. Um, oh God. Like it is just, it's so insidious to me. And then, okay. So then you also talk about the stars. That was another thing that we talked about. And people are already talking mm -hmm. about like coaching and things like that in the comments. So mm -hmm. Beachbody has their own lifestyle business coach that they use and promote the most. He speaks at the conferences, their top leaders work with him and, you know, promote his things too. And we talk about him on the podcast. His name is Josh Coates. I went to his website because I had never heard of this guy before and what it said on his website for me not anybody that understands Beachbody at all it says coach business coach to the stars and me thinking like stars when I think stars I think as a normal person who's not in Beachbody I think movie stars tv stars music stars I don't think Beachbody stars and so Harry that Styles. right there just the fact that he's using the word star in a way that makes it sound important when it's really just a loaded term that means beach body super hun. Like that is really, really loaded. And anybody who's in beach body, who's not yet a star would go to his website and see that and think, Oh my God, he trains the people that I've been told to emulate. If I want to be successful, I need to follow his advice too. And so all yeah. of these people, the 99% are going to buy his, his course or whatever as well. And I mean, I don't know the success rate of his course. If it's anything like MLM, which is what he's literally teaching, it's 99% are going to lose. And that kind of loaded language, specifically the way that he's doing that on his website is affiliation fraud, right? I mean, yeah. I mean, he's using his affinity with, with Beachbody to sell his course to people who are in Beachbody. Yeah. And you know, I mean, this happens outside of commercial cults and it's different because it's not all predicated on a scam where 99% of people lose. So that's why yeah. this is scammy in the pyramid and not necessarily outside the pyramid. If I'm running a business and I was like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. I need a business coach to help me because I don't have a business degree, but I'm trying to run this business and I need a business coach. And that's somebody that I would hire to help me with my business. That's a legitimate thing. But they're not going to be like, you should recruit more people to open up more of your own businesses. It's like, no, that's that's what he teaches. He literally just teaches people how to recruit. So yeah. it's when it's in that structure. The um the oh the the other example of affinity fraud right there on his website that ties into exactly what you were just saying, um, is that one of his courses is called um, the art of recruitment and, yes. you know, no, nothing political at all, but it, anyone who is familiar with Donald Trump, for instance, knows yes. that his book is called the art Just of the deal, the art that kind of, of language. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And, yeah, and a lot of people look to him as like, that. oh, success. Okay. <laughs> Right. The whole brand, that whole brand before the presidency, like we don't even need to go to that, but the mm -hmm. whole entire Trump brand before that is predicated on success. Giant gold statues or uh, giant gold hotels and buildings. Like it's all about that. Right. So even using, like you said, the art of. Yep. 
is a loaded term for anybody that's familiar with that and has maybe already an MLM read that book and is like, oh, I read the art of the deal, but now I should read the art of this, the art of leadership or whatever it is, the art of recruiting. And it can can even just be unconscious. Like that just sounds, it sounds, um, you know, real. It sounds professional because it's something that you don't even realize you've heard before right? in correlation or in connection with, with someone who, you know, successful. Yeah, absolutely. And here's the thing, like there's so many business coaches, like Josh Coates is not the only one. They they are everywhere. And I thought it was really funny when you were talking about the business coach that you had purchased from and then seeing her next ad, knowing that you had gotten nothing for your money and you were like, I'm part of the money you're bragging about. Like you gave yeah, me her whole for that money and here you are bragging about it. Her entire marketing campaign for the very next launch that she did, the next course that she launched a few months later was um, to, to tell her potential um, leads that uh, you wouldn't believe I made $75,000 on my last launch. And I was like, well, I paid for that. I gave you that money. You gave me literally nothing in return. And now you're using that as your selling point for the next one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Well, um, I'm going to go through these comments and see if there's any questions for you. If you guys have questions for Michelle and her time in, um, please put them in the comments so that we can get those questions. Or if you just have general like anti-MLM questions for the both of us, um, we would also love to answer those. I'm going to try to be doing these more often, at least once a week. I'll try to be a little more um, like schedulely with it in the future. (laughs) As opposed to being like, hey, you want to go live in 15 minutes? Like I'll I'll plan it better in the future. But hey, you got to start somewhere, right? You guys know we jump in, we look for the water second. So um, ask some questions. Uh, and I'm going to look for someone here that I think are really good ones that maybe we haven't talked about a lot before. Uh, and we will go through that. But if you see any questions on your end as well. Um, energize pre-workout. Is that Beachbody? Yeah. Okay. So someone says... Um, the energized pre-workout is literally the Kool-Aid I drank when I was active. Anyone else? I've two, never I'm, had a two, I'm a two scoop girl. <laughs> You're I'm a two, two, I'm a two scoop, two scoop mix the flavors girl, because you know, I had to get both flavors every month and not just one because I had to keep my husband active too. So. Oh, I see. So you're getting both. So you're like cocktailing your pre-workout. Oh yeah. My, my Was that something you or, used as a selling um, tool? A hundred percent. Um, <laughs> so no doubt about it. Yep. Like, you, you need, you, you have not lived until you've tried the lemon and the berry together. So you need to buy both. I mean, that would be a really MLM way to get people to buy something when someone said, well, I don't really need any more pre-workout. I've barely started the first batch I bought last month. You could be like, well, you haven't got the lemon yet. The lemon really kicks it up a notch. (laughs) Yeah, it's exactly like that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you you see that in other, I mean, it's an upsell. It's an upsell technique in any sales, but in, in an MLM, especially when you're on like an auto ship, it seems a little more scammy. You have to buy something. You signed a contract that you would. (laughs) (laughs) That's really what it feels like to me. (laughs) I was a two scoop girl twice a day. (laughs) Hey, Leslie. That's going to, you guys haven't checked out Leslie Fear. (laughs) Yeah. If you guys haven't checked out, I did an episode of Leslie Fear's podcast. I want to know. Um, and it was really great. It was a really fun talk. So if you guys haven't checked I haven't that out, heard of that. Really <clears throat> yeah, it's a fun podcast. I'm sure if Leslie, I told her, she's probably getting a lot more people that are like, tell us more MLM things. And Michelle is a great person to talk to. I've Nor- been doing Wex. my research. <laughs> Norwex. How awful is it? Ooh, you, you probably know more about Norwex than I do. It's the same. It's the same. I mean, they're all, they're all the same. This. I have a cabinet full of Shakeology that I never use. Very hard to cancel. Do you have any recommendations yeah. for that? Oh, um, about canceling or about <laughs> yeah. what to do with it? <laughs> canceling? Well, if you've seen Michelle's 
account, you already know her favorite Shakeology uh, recipe. It goes right in the trash. So <laughs> it, it's um, pinned at the top and it's pretty cute. <laughs> what's an easy, an easier way if people are having trouble canceling their Beachbody auto ship and their subscriptions? Um, do you have any advice? So uh, I will say for, <laughs> I'm not saying that I would do this for like everyone on this live, but for my downline, when I quit, I offered to go in and take everyone's passwords and cancel everything for them. <laughs> but um, if you go to your um, teambeachbody.com uh, website, um, that's the website where you can order things. Regularbeachbody.com is just the workouts. Teambeachbody.com um, has a, um, an, a my orders section. And if you go down to not your orders, because they make it really hard to find, um, but if you go to memberships and subscriptions, um, it does give you the option to speak to a representative to cancel. And I will be fair to the representatives like they I'm sure deal with a lot of crap all day long and they're honestly if you just do the virtual chat they'll cancel it for you they're they're sweet it's um it's it's actually canceling your coach account itself and the business fees that's the real pain in the ass but when when it comes to just like canceling your monthly subscription it, it is pretty easy if you're willing to just put in like 10 minutes and speak to their like little virtual chat people. We have a former two-star diamond in the chat. Hello. Uh -oh. Good. Congrats. Congrats on being out. Um, once had a big time diamond coach side eye fat shame me and my hubby when we met her at an event. I'm so sorry. That oh, happened to you. that is so gross. I am sorry. It's more about her than anything. So 100%. Ugh. Um, this is not a beach body question, but what what do we know about those fizzy ring bomb parties here on TikTok? <laughs> well, I do know Same that shit, um, different the, day. I do know that the Jenny Wild has a fantastic parody video of them. So that that's about all I know about them personally. <laughs> I would go watch yeah. it. Yeah, funny. But um, I think very similar to the that, oysters. Yeah, very I think you were telling me that like, like the buy people it, they are, open it live. Yeah, like the people who are paying for this crap, like they don't even like really get anything except like FOMO or something, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Is so is this team no beach body chat? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. I mean, well, this is just team no MLMs in general chat, but we're focusing on Beach Body tonight because that was Michelle's company and she knows more about it than I do. <laughs> probably more about it than any other MLM too so <laughs> oh yeah the the snaps for weight loss it's the same thing um and the, all those companies are also owned by Terry LaCour <laughs> the king of opening MLM franchises um they're all the same it's all the same stuff it's it's the kind of stuff that works while you're using it and stops Up working to fifteen hundred dollars how, yeah, how many of those ridiculous. rings have ever actually been worth $1,500? Come on. <laughs> I've watched some of those and some of the times I'm like, oh my God, it's so amazing. And I'm like, what are we looking at the same thing right now? Like that is so bad. Um, so excuse bad. you. It's literally the ring that um, was thrown in the ocean by Rose on the Titanic. So, oh, it's That's worth sad. so much. We literally dove down and got it. Yeah. One of you will be the winner. It's worth a billion flabbity jillion dollars. Good luck. <laughs> but, oh, you man. know, if, if everything freezes over, you, you there is no room on my floating door. Sorry. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. <laughs> um, the oyster thing was an MLM. There are people on here that are legit oyster shuckers that, that like source. Woo, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> source uh all their oysters and their jewelry and they sell it there's a woman here on tiktok called shuck it i think it's shuck it 04 or something and she does that and she is not an mlm and is not an affiliate an affiliate of any mlm or anything like that and that is her own true business but um hers is a little higher quality than the very poor quality mlm ones if that's something that you're into and you miss the vantel pearls but i think vantel pearls closed in the summer 
and then we're taking orders up until October. And then I think they've officially like closed their doors for, for sure. So I don't know if there's any more oyster MLMs that are currently doing that. It might just be people who are going out of business or trying to get rid of their stock. Um, but that one actually did close. Uh, the pink zebra Maxwell, M Maxwell, <laughs> wax melts. Are Got John ridiculous. Maxwell on the mind. <laughs> Maxwell. <Yeah. laughs> I know a Beachbody coach that lost over $10,000 in commission because of, of not balanced legs. Yeah. So in Beachbody, you only have two legs, um, the right oh. leg and the left leg. And if everyone isn't placed absolutely perfectly, I mean, you're screwed. I think um, you have like 24 hours if you accidentally place somebody under the wrong leg when they became a coach to move them to the other one. But after that time period, like they are where they are. So for instance, if I had signed up my husband and, um, and another person who was actually going to run the business with me, um, but I had put them both on my left leg, I would have been screwed. I wouldn't even have been able to rank up. Um, even though the next rank, the Emerald rank is having two active coaches, um, it has to be one on each leg. Oh, okay. I see that. So you have and it, it two also, active legs, basically. Yes. And, uh, and who's on which leg also determines um, how many cycle bonuses you get um, when you're actually recruiting people and making money on bonuses. Jeez. Yeah. Um, how do companies like Beachbody that are so very clearly seeming to be like a pyramid scheme fly under the radar? That's a really what good question. Your, have you... <laughs> What is my your opinion, opinion on why pyramid schemes legal ones fly under the radar yeah so my opinion is mostly derived from um listening to the dream podcast twice <laughs> um season one specifically um talks all about how um and, and ponzinomics oh my gosh was absolutely <laughs> critical in my understanding <laughs> um book by robert Pitt, uh, fitzpatrick and um so, yeah, I mean, my opinion is the facts. Amway basically wrote the the FTC guidelines, if you will, on what defines an illegal pyramid scheme. And they are a pyramid scheme. So obviously they did not write them fairly. <laughs> That's my short answer. <laughs> um, a leg in an MLM is just like the beginning of a new pyramid. Yeah, the, so the how leg many that's legs the top of the pyramid and the new row. pyramid. What was that? How, how many legs did you control in LuLaRoe row, or is that what was that a thing in LuLaRoe? So LuLaRoe wasn't like a binary like that where it's like just two. Mm -hmm. It was whatever I don't know what the other one is, but like I had like I think I had nine people directly underneath me. Mm -hmm. And then they had people underneath them. So I mean it really branched out and like went out like a like a triangle really pretty, yeah pretty quickly very quickly yeah so our our shape was um it was like the beginning of a pyramid it was a triangle <laughs> it, was, it was a triangle there was no bottom <laughs> um <laughs> Just... and then you've got your two legs and and then there were like and they branch out these, from there we had graphics you know, with the empty circles to motivate you to fill in the circles with people's faces right. when you sign them up. Um, <laughs> and it was just like two lines going down. Um, but then the top two can branch out like this. So it doesn't look like a pyramid. So we have someone saying my whole team, except me, lost money every single month. I was a big recruiter. And there we go. You know, like, thank you for your honesty. First of all, um, you're definitely 100%. not alone. There are a lot of people out there that that did that, that thought they were helping I... people recruited and they were the only one making money wondering why isn't this working for everybody else? They're doing what I told them to. I mean, it's all part of it, but I think that's that a very my, common thing. I think that my star diamond, um, upline was most likely the only person profiting in our team. And it's a big team. It's a big team, but Nobody was at a rank where I can envision them making more um, monthly than I know for a fact they were paying. Yeah. That's just fact. Um, real quick, Bitcoin and crypto are not MLMs. They are basically like high, fast moving stocks that never close. So it's like if the stock market never, ever closed, that's crypto. Um, and Bitcoin is a crypto. 
Uh, but there are MLMs that sell crypto courses in which you can learn how to trade crypto. You can learn that on Wikipedia for free. You could ask mm -hmm. people on the internet as well and learn how to trade crypto for free. There are apps you can join. You can start trading crypto for very, very little money. You don't have okay, to spend but, a ton of money, but, but it is the stock market. So it is basically legal gambling. Yeah, true. <laughs> um, and also like how pretty is Wikipedia? Like how's their hair? <laughs> because <laughs> you this could Wikipedia learn. lady sounds like a hater. <laughs> you you could learn crypto from a Monet girl. <laughs> yeah, that's something that we're seeing right now. A lot of these Monet girls, MLM women, huns, whatever you want to call them. These MLM Monet reps are leaving Monet and they're going to iGenius, which is a crypto course MLM. But it's about the product. <laughs> but it's... But it is about the product. <laughs> we love shampoo and conditioner and we want you right. to have the best hair health. Um, but, you know, I'm just going to switch over to cryptocurrency. <laughs> right. I, that's what it's so funny. It's like a crypto MLM is like so ridiculous to me because it's just like, really? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like if there's anybody out there that anybody thinks they could take advantage of anybody's ignorance, when I say ignorance, it's just you don't understand the subject, right? It's not that you're stupid or whatever. It's just that I'm ignorant on a lot of things. I just don't know. And so if someone came to me and in my ignorance, I can be very easily manipulated into thinking that this person has the answer because they're showing me pictures of boats and cars and stacks of cash. And if we watched Lula Rich and we learned anything about Sam Schultz, we knew that it's very easy to just Google stacks of cash and send those and be like, yeah, that's the money I made today. So again, like, who are we trusting? Who are we putting our faith in? Who are we being like, that's a really good guy, you know, like, uh, man, uh, did beach party, did beach body start as just products and fitness videos? I remember infomercials and then suddenly it was an MLM. Yeah. And they, I think they did, but I don't remember when they, um, when they went MLM, um, I mean, obviously I was not part of it at that time. It was way before my time, but um, that's when I think I've read that that's when they introduced team Beachbody, which is why all the products are sold on team right. and not Beachbody.com because they're technically two separate like entities under the corporation and team Beachbody right. is the MLM. I don't know log the logistics or the time frame though. Right. Uh, someone asked, where did it go? What was a good one? Oh, what is a Hunbot? So um, we have our own language over here in the anti-MLM community. It just sort of, uh, it's inclusionary of a community. Um, and those are some of the terms that we use sort of in passing when talking about things. So a Hun, we'll start at the very bottom. A Hun is just somebody that sells for an MLM. It's not derogatory, um, not in the way... <laughs> It's kind of like Karen, but not like Karen. Do you know what I mean? So anybody that sells for an MLM is a hun. Anybody that formerly sold for an MLM is an ex-hun. I'm an ex-hun, proud ex-hun over here, proud ex-hun over there. <laughs> um, so a, a mega hun is someone who's like at the top of the pyramid knows exactly what they're doing. They're the ones that are jumping from MLM to MLM and taking their team. They're the ones that you know, people are disposable. We see a lot of those big personalities on here on TikTok. Uh, and then a hun bot is going to be somebody who's very, very robotic. Uh, you're copy, usually paste. Like the copy and paste kind of messages from hun bots where it's just lots much like, of emojis, lots of emojis, lots of, Hey hun. Um, and then always when it doesn't go their way, a hun bot will then switch and just, um, just attack you ad hominem. So it's a fun experience. If you've ever met a hun bot, you would absolutely know. Yeah. Mega huns probably aren't going to give you much of their time unless you're a producer. So it's the hun or bots. Or an influencer. All right, right, your bag and flower on tech tongue. Um, glow. Oh. I haven't you heard said of Glow, glow B, but it's actually globe. It's pronounced globe. Oh, I. 
Okay, I have heard of Globey, this, but and only it's pronounced in the globe. Context, I've heard of this, but only in the context of um, making fun of their name. So, <laughs> yes. That's so it. that's another thing. Like, okay, so here in the compassionate anti MLM community, we don't make fun of people. We don't make fun of the way they look, the way they dress, the things they can't control. All people are beautiful. Some of us are just misguided. So what we poke fun at and the dark comedy that we have, a lot of it is just sort of shared trauma that we've experienced or inside jokes because of that. Words like hunbots and things like that. But we never, ever make fun of the people. That's very important to know. Um, we do like to poke fun at the products and the names, though, because MLMs have the stupidest names in the whole entire world. Yes, and even and if it's actually, a normal word, a it'll be spelled stupid. <laughs> yep, there's a question about that in the chat. It says, God, why with the weird pronunciations and spellings? Thank you. To be to be so, you know, quirky and unique. Uh, you know, I unique think with a Y. I, I think it's like, I don't know. It, they like to be confusing. Like they're, they're comp plans <laughs> and they're terms and conditions. And they just don't want you to know what you're talking about or reading. Because if you know what you're reading or talking about, you're not going to join. <laughs> yeah. And and I don't know why they do ridiculous names other than. Yeah. I don't know look, if that applies to the names, but. <laughs> to look quirky or to be like, Ooh, what's that? Ooh, a pun. I don't know. A hun pun. Yeah. Bella Vita. That sounds like cheese. Thank you. That's the one. It's the little packs where they snap it and they slurp it. <laughs> And it says brand, but it's got the, it's got the, um, the umlauts and the, and the, and all the things above the, of the vowels. So they're like long vowels. So it's actually brain and not brand. Doesn't prove it have, um, their you like that. Yeah. An umlaut. <laughs> like, where are you from? America. Germany. Or <laughs> Canada or something. <laughs> Not some place that uses umlaut. Would be enough time to tell me to take a really quick shower. Yeah, take a shower, girlfriend. Thank you, mom. You're welcome. How much longer will that be? We're gonna probably be on here for another half an hour. Then we're gonna watch Encanto, okay? But there's not gonna be enough. Time. There'll be enough time. I'm in charge. Okay. How many times have you watched Encanto? I haven't seen it yet. That's like what? I sit around seven times. <laughs> she comes running ah, back in. Okay. I've watched it seven times. Well, I wasn't talking to you anyway, Berta. <laughs> oh yeah. Abby's the real star of the show here. I'm getting Encanto Funko Pops. <laughs> Mary, you're going to take them out of the box, so though. <laughs> All right. Bye. Love you, Mom. I love you, too. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to see Encanto. Like, very much so. Um, I've heard good things. I've heard really good things. Yeah. Um, tran tr I don't know how to say that. Tranount? Tranant? Tranount? Dumb name. <laughs> it's an MLM. <laughs> That's the first red flag. <laughs> um, the only thing I know about Trenounce or whatever is that all of the Boo people, once Boo closed, went over there. And it's a CBD MLM. And that's all I know. Really. Yeah, it's really funny um, when I interview people from companies that I don't know how to pronounce. And then they tell me how to pronounce it. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> my um, favorite one is Optavia because I literally right. thought it was Optavia for the longest time. And it made me want to sing. Octavia. And it made me want to eat yogurt. Octavia. Isn't that a, yeah. like a yogurt? Yeah. Um, Activia. Yes. <laughs> I know my shit. Uh, it's a fiber <laughs> yogurt. That's funny. Accidental puns. Okay. Yeah. So um, that one so, is an MLM. So um, I don't know anything I about keep of color. Seeing, I keep seeing what if we like the products? That's what I have a hard time with. Um, and I want to recommend there are probably a bunch of Facebook groups about this, but um, there, uh, what is the one that Judy runs? There's, Ooh. there's a Facebook group. There's um, a dupe for that. Or, oh, there's an MLM dupe for that. Buy this, not that. Buy this, um, not that. And it is a Facebook group where um, it's specifically for finding um, and recommending um, dupes for MLM products. And that's literally its whole purpose. It's, it's fantastic. 
<laughs> I love this. It says, Monate always makes me think of yeast infections. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have to do something with that Mon- Moneta stat or something. Moneta stat. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's their newest product. It just came out. <laughs> uh, I'm writing that one. Are down. you feeling I'm less in front and it. you want hair growth? <laughs> Moneta stat. <laughs> hair okay. growth. We'll, we'll figure it out. Okay. Something, about, something about hair growth. Monet is done. So good. <laughs> We're horrible. Um, finding dupes for MLM products. Um, here's the thing. And I want everybody to understand this. And, and people that listen to my podcast know and people that are in our group know. But leaving MLM and being anti-MLM is a spectrum. And so... I don't expect everybody to be as gung-ho as I was when I left. I don't expect everybody to be like, I'm going to burn it all in a bonfire. Like it doesn't always happen like that overnight. Sometimes it takes a long time. Sometimes you might've felt like, Hey, I I left, I left my MLM 20 years ago and I've been anti MLM since, but you listen to my podcast and then all of a sudden you're triggered and you have all these feelings again, because you never actually processed through them the first time because you were led to believe that you were a failure and that nobody wants to talk about their failure. And we don't talk about that. And you're a lady or whatever. And, you know, we just hide that and we keep it. And it's just a shame that we, we keep for ourselves. Um, and so everybody that's leaving MLM is on this spectrum of anti MLM. And sometimes people need a security blanket. And sometimes that security blanket is a bag of Shakeology. Sometimes that security blanket is skin so soft. Sometimes that security blanket is wanting to watch these lives because they make you happy and you're just not a hundred percent out yet. And that's okay. And I don't want anybody to shame people for that. It's a spectrum and we're leaving and it's a process. Not everybody, think about any abusive relationship you've ever been in and how hard it is to leave and how hard it is to finally make that decision because there are so many emotions and so many feelings and so many memories and so much energy, blood, sweat, and tears caught up into it. It's the same exact thing. It's just much bigger. Some of us leave our relationships and we go back a couple times to hang out. Some of us leave our relationships and get divorced and then we remarry that person years later. Like, so put yourself in those situations that are similar and understand that sometimes people relapse and sometimes people need those security blankets as they leave. And we don't want to shame people. We always want people to understand that we're always constantly trying to move out of it and be better and do better. But sometimes if you need one of those little security blankets while you're on that path, it's okay. We don't want to actively support MLM. We don't want to actively go in and shop things. Uh, You can shop from people that are going out of business One of the things when you leave MLM and you're anti-MLM is you're going to have to let go of those special releases because they're they're always going to be coming. They'll never end. There'll always be a new flavor, a new scent, a new color, a new print, a new warmer, a new everything. So you can't be like, well, the next one, I just got to wait until the next one. You got to cut that kind of stuff off cold turkey. But if you do have a security blanket, you can find those products when they're gone and you're ready. There are groups and people that can help you find replacements. Oftentimes they will be cheaper and they will be better. Um, And sometimes it's, it's trial and error, right? You got to try a couple different shampoos before you find the one you like. And that's okay too. The great thing about professional, like salon quality shampoo, if you don't like it, they'll take it back immediately. They won't even ask why not. They'll be like, okay, no problem. They don't do that at Monet. No. So it's all of this, right? Like, I don't know if you want to add anything to that. You and I have had many conversations about this sort of thing, but I don't know if you want to add to that anti-MLM spectrum and, and understanding that this is a process as we leave and we learn. Yeah, I it's actually okay. do have it's something okay. to say about that. That's exactly... <laughs> I, I, want, I want to speak to everybody who's looking at this, who if you've been in an MLM, and I, I don't know if you've listened to my, my podcast episode, but just a brief background on it is um, when I was in Beachbody, I think my total commission checks added up to like $800 or something. Um, And after I left my MLM, um, I went back through all of my orders and my bank statements and everything. And I wanted to know how much money I had spent on Beachbody products because I thought it was around $1,500. 
No, in 14 months, I had spent $4,300 that would have made a world of difference in my family for my two-year-old and my husband and me and would have, you know, it, it would have paid a third of our daycare for the year. And we really needed that money. And I felt so much shame, guilt, humiliation, embarrassment. It's not something that people are going to talk about because it's embarrassing. I'm trying to be loud about it despite my humiliation and my feelings of guilt about it because I want you guys to know that if that's you or it, it resonates with you, you're not alone because everyone has done it. Everyone has bought their rank. Everyone has on the last day of the month, if they haven't hit their goals set by their upline, um, created a ghost account and placed a new order and tried to pass it off as an actual order. And then you just don't know what to do with this crap. And you just spend all this money and you're not even making enough money to cover it back. So yeah, that's my soapbox. I want you all to know that. I mean, you can reach out to me. You can go into the anti MLM hashtag on TikTok or Instagram. Um, you know, there are so many people and on YouTube, there are so many people in this community that, um, that you can tell these things to. It's so therapeutic. It's so cathartic to get it off of your chest. And you're not the only person who has experienced that. Even if you feel like you're the biggest, dumbest idiot in the world, you're not, you're absolutely not. So that's my soapbox. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. I still struggle to state my anti MLM feelings due to so many I know who are so deep in one. I get that. I feel that. It took me a long time <laughs> um, because I had so many friends and not just like friends that like I met while I was in LuLaRoe, but like friends that I knew, like childhood friends whose wives sold LuLaRoe and these things. And anytime I would speak up about it, like he, who was, I mean, he was like a brother to me. He would come at me and he'd be like, right. And he'd always leave. And I always felt terror. Oh, I don't want to deal with it. He's going to leave a comment. He's going to say something. And his wife is still in, in LuLaRoe. She was in one of the most recent photo shoots. I was like, oh, there she is. She's still in. He told me after we went back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And I was like, look, you can't fight with me on statistics like that's fine but this is literally what's happening like you can defend your wife all you want it's fine I'm not attacking your wife and he brought it to the, the dms and he said look you know like I've known you my whole life I love you but I love my wife and I'm gonna support my wife and I said that is absolutely totally okay that's fine but like do understand what she's in and he goes oh I fully know what she's in I hate LuLaRoe it's a total pyramid scheme. I fucking hate it with everything. He goes, but I love my wife and loving my wife and supporting my wife is more important to me. And at that moment, I think we both sort of were like, look, I'm not going to stop talking about LuLaRoe. And he was like, then I'm just not going to comment on it anymore. And we both just sort of had this mutual agreement and it never happened again after that. But he did confess to me that he hated it. And this was like two and a half, three years ago. And she's still in. Oh boy. I, I can't a, imagine yeah. that he likes it more. Yeah. That is. But he's very successful in his job and all of his things. So, I mean, even if she was only making a dollar a month, like his money takes care of them. But she presents it as LuLaRoe is this incredible thing. Yeah. And most of us know the truth. How do yeah. you get off the MLM roller coaster? I know he's totally not supporting his wife. I you know it's totally the pyramid thing. I wish he saw that, but he just doesn't. Um, how do yeah. we get off the MLM roller coaster? So um, I'm going to, I'm going to say probably this is a battle with cognitive dissonance because that's the roller coaster to me is the cognitive dissonance. So the cognitive dissonance is that really uncomfortable feeling you feel when you, we talk about things you don't like. <laughs> You don't this want to hear it because you kind of think it's probably true and you don't want to hear it because then you can never unhear it. Right. Because well, in your heart and soul, you believe A, but I have just presented you with factual information that's B. Supporting B. 
And you're like, both of these things can't be true. So that's sort of cognitive dissonance. And that for me, I think is probably the MLM roller coaster of believing this one is going to be so great. Oh my God. Like this is from the ground floor. Oh my God. It's exactly the same, but it's probably because I shouldn't be selling CBD. I should be selling leggings. I'm going to join this one. I'm selling leggings. And I'm not sure if that's the roller coaster that you um, feel. I, I don't know why I'm freezing. I haven't moved. I'm sorry that we're glitchy. Yeah, oh, that's a, that's a bummer. I'm not um, seeing any connection issues here. But... Yeah, I don't have anything on my end. It says I have a good connection. I still have a green. It says good connection. I have a green, green um, dot. I don't know. I hate that. Maybe it's just because we're so busy. But um, that MLM so popular. roller coaster. The MLM roller coaster is difficult. Um, what would you say is your advice, Michelle? I'm trying to think about when I got off of it. Um, and really all I can come back to is being open-minded to hearing the truth, listening to what anti-MLMers have to say. And it does require seeking out the ones who are going to speak to you compassionately because if you just go join a random Facebook group that is anti-MLM looking for anti-MLM education you may not find it depending on the group you could just find people blasting Huns and mocking them but if you I, I guess my advice is keep following Roberta, listening to her podcast and following the recommendations that she puts in her show notes on her episodes, because I really feel like with, when you're feeling that cognitive dissonance, once you open yourself up to hearing it, you can't unhear it. And that, that's really all I can really come back to is education, educating yourself, um, I don't know. That that's where I'm at. <laughs> no, absolutely. Absolutely. Um Aaron, Aaron is B's, the only thing that's gonna change it. Like I, I can throw out some YouTubers that, you know, will be compassionate and open your um, you know, mind to some of these things. Like um Aaron Bees comes to mind. I was listening I was to her say today. She's spectacular um at putting things that she was in her MLM for 13 and a half years before leaving. And so she, she's made it to the top of the pyramid. She's been there and she breaks everything down very compassionately because she knows exactly where you're coming from. If you're still in your MLM. Um, so that's a YouTuber that I would recommend for, for trying to get off the roller coaster. Also, um, Jessica Hickson. Um, that's, that's yeah. great. I mean, it, Deanna Mins. I'm just like, these are the people that yeah. I've been watching and watching and watching lately. <laughs> yeah. All, those are all great, all wonderful women, incredible women, great accounts to follow. You're a great account to follow. There's so many amazing people here on TikTok as well that are really great accounts. Lots of compassionate comedy and compassionate education. Jenny Wild, the Jenny, Jenny Wild, Wild on is TikTok. Amazing. Phenomenal. I don't want no Huns is a great account. Mallory is fantastic. Love her. Danielle. Yeah. Um, Danielle. From Huns to uh, Humans is another great from podcast. Huns, yeah. From Huns to Humans is a wonderful podcast that specifically deals with the mental health side of MLM and anti-MLM. Um, and so if you're dealing with any kind of feelings of like depression, shame, guilt, anxiety, um, you know, even we've, we've talked about eating disorders having to do with uh, Optivia and um beach body like she she's a, a therapist and she has a podcast she doesn't obviously diagnose anything um outside of her yeah. professional she's work fantastic. but she is spectacular resource there um yeah hey erin we were just talking hey, about girl, hey. we were up. we just uh summoned erin i think <laughs> with our powers combined uh. The power of three. Here she is. <laughs> oh no, let's not start chanting the craft. Because <laughs> I can. Y'all need mammoth. <laughs> oh man, that's so funny. 
Oh, I know. We can find the Nancys from doing harm. The Nancys of uh, Prove It. And, uh, I made a, a craft meme back in the LuLaRoe days. And it said, I bind you, Deanne. <laughs> from doing harm against others and harm against yourself. And harm against yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I it was pretty you. funny. It was funny. Not a lot of people got it. But the ones that did, like, really got it, you know? If, if you know, you know. And I know we actually, um, we had a lot tips of on clearing out the office. It's oh. totally fine. You, whatever MLM you sell, there's no, there's no anything here. Michelle didn't sell Lula. Um, there are a lot of going out of business groups on Facebook. I would recommend checking out those, uh, going out of business, Facebook groups or goob groups. I don't know if there's any just MLM specific ones, but a lot of times there will be a Facebook group like for your MLM. So like LuLaRoe going out of business or paparazzi going out of business or something like that. There'll be groups like that. Um, you can join those. <clears throat> Should be helpful. Also, eBay Depending is a on the really good place to sell MLM stuff. eBay, it yeah. sells like hotcakes. And Macari too. Macari is a really good place as well. Yeah, I was going to oh, say you, Aaron. Um, also depending on the product um if it's appropriate a donate to women's shelters is a is a fantastic thing to right. do you can also donate your product that you can't right Absolutely. but you, you know like i said depending on the product so i if you are going to go that route it's a super kind generous thing for you to do but call ahead to the shelter first and ask what they actually need because a lot of times women's shelters and and all kinds of homeless shelters will will get a lot of donations of things that they they really can't or don't want to do anything with and it's just a burden on them but absolutely if you clear it with them first that's a wonderful thing to do with your that's your, excellent your, advice uh, as well box. excellent advice to call ahead and be like hey i'm getting rid of all this is this something that you could need you could reach out to multiple shelters especially if they're like food like products I mean, I hate to say give them to food banks or food shelters, but there could be somebody, especially if they're like these high protein bars, like you could also make bags to give out to keep in your cars that maybe had socks and toothpaste. You could put the extra MLM things in there as well as a way to get rid of things if that's something that you're doing too. Just different ways to get rid of it that maybe doesn't make you feel so slimy. <laughs> yeah, and it could be very cathartic, honestly. If you feel yeah. slimy and, and guilty about the way that you obtained these things, maybe you don't want to make more money off of them. Depends right. on your situation, of course. Um, right. But I don't, I definitely don't look down on anyone who does want to recoup their investment either. So, or it's right. Too. And that's another thing, right? So, as long as it's not causing harm to you or others, like selling toxic jewelry or toxic dirt. Um, as long as it's not doing that, because if you do know about that and you're still selling it willfully, you could have some sort of repercussions come on you. So as long as you're following guidelines and being upfront about things, um, I even sold like old MLM stuff on eBay when I was leaving stuff that I had even bought that I never used like stupid drink packages. I couldn't get out of auto ships for, and they were expired. They were MLM expired. They weren't actually expired. They were MLM expired. Um, and I put that in there and I was like, just letting you know, these expired a month ago and people still bought it. They didn't care. So as long as you let people know, hey, this is what it is. People, people, you know, buyer beware. Just let them know what they're getting into so that you it doesn't come back on you. Absolutely. Um, was there any other questions? Yeah, um, a couple of people, we I guess had a oh, lot like of comments. pharmacists selling. Anyway, Gross. I'm sorry, what was that? Um, there was somebody that was pointing out that we had overlooked a lot of comments asking about Mary Kay specifically. Oh. Have you done episodes on Mary Kay? So I have a podcast episode about Mary Kay. I haven't, don't think I've done any TikTok videos. I do have a podcast episode about Mary Kay that is called Laura Catone. And I actually just um, was emailing back and forth with a Mary Kay rep who was in for a really long time. And she said, hey, I loved Laura's episode. It was fantastic. And she's a great start. But I have a lot to add to that. And so she's going to be coming on the show um, and elaborating on that episode. And we're going to be going a little bit deeper into Mary Kay soon. 